What's good, church fam? Just wanted to share with you some of my learning and discoveries in the area of leadership. It's an area that I am growing in and I'm becoming more and more passionate about. Uh, and I believe leadership is not just for those who are in position of leadership, but it is for every believer. Uh, what do I mean by that? Maybe some of you are thinking, I'm not a leader. This is not for me then. No. This is also for you. Let's take a look at that word leader. I love how John Maxwell simply defined it. Leadership is influence. Every single one of us have been given a stewardship by God of a specific influence. Maybe it's over only one person. Maybe it's two. Maybe it's a whole congregation. Maybe it's a whole company. But no matter who you are, every single one of you, have been given a measure of influence. How we steward that influence will really determine whether or not we represent the kingdom of God well. And so that's why we need to grow in our leadership. We need to grow in our influence. So today specifically, I want to address uh, the enemy of influence. And a lot of times it has become something that cripples influence. Uh, and it is this word that has been gripping a lot of believers and causing so many uh, churches to lose heart. And, and it's not fear because we've seen fear through the pandemic. And, and yeah, it's still around because of uh, the, the, the diseases that are happening, but also the situations around the world. But what I want to address specifically is this word indifference. The Bible talks about how in the last days, many, many's heart will grow cold. And I feel like indifference is exactly that. It is a sense of apathy. It is a sense of disconnection. And I want to talk today about three ways on how we can overcome indifference. Let's start it out in uh, in the book of Luke chapter 10, verse 25 to 29, which, by the way, I want to encourage all of you to read it because it's our essentially weekly reading that grounds us in what it is that God is teaching us as a whole body of Christ. Uh, starting on verse 25, on one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law? Jesus replied, how do you read it? And this expert on the law answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Now, do this, and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? I feel like Jesus completely addressed this issue and it's existed since back then. You know, when you've done something in such a routine, you can come to the point where you become apathetic towards something, where you become cold and indifferent towards something, even though maybe it's something that you value. Maybe it's something that at one point or another you hold and you treasure as something of great significance and importance in your life. But the more it has lost its sense of purpose and sacredness, it slips into indifference. And within the past few years, we're actually seeing the impact of that, where uh, essentially there's a significant drop of general engagement for people when it comes down to the matter of spiritual activity, whether it is church, whether it is just meeting up in a community. Right now in churches everywhere across America, we have seen anywhere from 30 to 50% drop in engagement. And this includes the Sunday celebrations or for us Saturday celebrations, uh, you know, outreach events, small groups. And this number has leaked even in our day-to-day -day interactions with the people that we know. People are living more disengaged, not because they are fearful, but because they are indifferent. And so at first, we may be thinking, man, this is probably like the whole vaccine thing that hasn't been taken care of, the, the one that we've been arguing about. And then there was the variants and uh, even relief from the Delta and now Omicron, right? And so many different things are happening. And, and yet we wondered if people are just generally fearful, but that's also not true. Because then many people uh, that don't find their way back to church community or, uh, or, or some kind of spiritual activity have no trouble funding their way to Target or Walmart or Costco or an NBA game or a football game or a dinner out or a tropical vacation, a family reunion, a concert. But what 
I'm trying to allude to is that maybe it's not fear that we are actually facing, it's indifference. Indifference is defined as a lack of interest. It's a lack of concern, a lack of sympathy, and it's just simply expressing what is not important to you. It's like many people have assessed their life and reconsidered what truly matter and decided that engaging with any type of spiritual activity and connecting with other people the way that we have always known to just found its place in insignificance. And that's what indifference does. You stop coming and you never really think of yourself as like, I have left something. I've walked away from something. No, it, you slowly just drift. It's like that friendship. It, it, you have ever friends like that? They used to hang out very, very often, and, and, but you're, you're not hanging out anymore maybe because of different seasons. You're not enemies. You're not like you don't hate on a person, but you just drifted apart. Indifference works the same way. You become indifferent to things that you no longer see as valuable. So if it's insignificant or if it's, uh, or if it's indifferent for you, then you stop carving out time. And that's why the things that is of great value in the kingdom of God stop holding value in our lives. So how, how do we overcome indifference? I'm going to give you three simple things that I, I want you to think about. Number one, I think we need to find again. You need to find your drive and passion once more. See, you are indifferent about things that you're not passionate about. But for the things that you're passionate about, you will never be indifferent. As a matter of fact, that becomes your sole focus. Now, what are things that you are passionate about? Are the things of God still your passion? If not, maybe it's time for you to rediscover the passion that is erupting constantly in the kingdom of God. How can you not be excited for a God that is actually on mission of redeeming the entire universe to himself and you get to be a part of that? redemption story. And I love that about God. And, and, you know, and I think we need to really discover, God, where is my place in this whole thing? I know you have this great big plan and I want to be passionate towards it. What is it that you have given me? Maybe it's time for you to connect with somebody in your group. Maybe somebody that you know, a good friend and also a follower of Jesus and have them speak into your life and go, man, I feel like I, I, I've lost connection. I've lost this passion and drive. Hey, what do you see in my life? Sorry. Are there things that uh, maybe you notice that I'm passionate about, but maybe I've stopped noticing these things? It'll be a great place to start for you to find your drive and passion. And, and sometimes you need somebody to speak into your life. So you can do that. And sometimes, you know, like the, the, the problem with this whole idea of indifference is that it doesn't really endanger love or hate. It's not that kind of line that you're crossing. It's more like a slowly moving into obliviousness, right? Where you are just oblivious about uh, you don't know what you don't know, right? And it just, it just becomes the new normal for you. And what if a cold heart becomes a new normal? Well, that's not normal in the kingdom of God. And if we are in that space, we need to come to repentance. And sometimes the best way to solve a problem is to name the problem. And I hope this helps name it. And it's called indifference. Uh, number two, we need to clarify our season and vision. You need to clarify your season and vision. Where are you at in life? And you can be honest about it. Come to honest space about what you, where you are in, in your life, in your relationship with God, in your relationship with the community that you're a part of. Um, you know, and, and if you feel disconnected, it's okay for you to say, I feel this way. I feel like this is no longer important for me. I know it should be, but I don't feel that. Maybe when you come to an honest place, then you can assess, why is it that I feel like this? And allow God and the Holy Spirit to move in you and maybe reveal things that you have long forgotten. Why do you do the things that you do? Why do you follow Jesus? Why does relationship matter or don't matter to you? Would you allow God to bring you to an honest space? Would you step into the light and allow him to address some issues, maybe in your heart, that you have grown indifferent to and you're not even aware of it? Number three, renew your hope and mission. 
I, I know I know it sucks when we think as a leader that we're or, or somebody who carries influence that what we're battling is indifference. And, and I, I get it. It's not fun. Uh, for us to allow God to expose some of our idols, some of our insecurities, some of the things that we wrestle with internally that we've been hiding, uh, and maybe we've been burying it under the things that, uh, you know, that we consider to be indifferent and things that we are uh, considering to be not valuable. But what if in the exposing and in allowing God to deal with these things, you'll find passion again, and you'll find the clarity for the vision that you've been longing for? And you become a better steward of that influence. So if if the best way to battle indifference is to fuel someone's passion level, perhaps then one path toward that goal would be considering the passion or, or, or considering the mission that God has given more than the method. I think the mission of the church is getting accomplished as well or better outside of the church context more than it does inside. And the mission can be accomplished in outside of the building, in homes, in workplaces, in the community, in the world, in the parks, in the coffee shops, and no matter where it is in the world, maybe we need to renew our hope that maybe what we need to focus on is no longer what's going on inside the church's building. That the real mission is not starting there, it's actually out. What would it look like for us to shift our focus instead of having an inward focus? And don't get me wrong, in is important because you need relationship with one another. But it can't just stay there. We cannot be indifferent about the, the situation around us. People need Jesus. So I would like to challenge you to this week reflect as we read scripture together to uh, address the heart issue just like that expert at the law. You know, he got so comfortable that when Jesus challenged him, hey, you know, you know the word well, but you're already indifferent. And that's why when you're indifferent, you begin to justify the position that you're in, because here's the truth, you're comfortable. And, uh, and you know, and the way that God grow us is to bring us to a place where we're not comfortable. So allow God to do that. And let's find passion again. Let's clarify our vision. And let's renew our hope and the mission for tomorrow. I believe God is up to something great. How about you?